Hello YouTube. In this video we're going to be uh, discussing solving systems that involve decimals and fractions. And not that it's very, very difficult or any different than how you'd solve a normal 2x2 two two linear system, but um, just a few techniques I wanted to share with everybody. Starting with system number one up here, you can see that it involves decimals. Uh, and everything goes out to the nearest hundredth. Now that's just a convenience in this case, but we'd say uh, one thing that would be nice is if you didn't have to deal with decimals. And the nice thing about dealing with an equation is this. You could multiply the entire equation by a, a constant or a scalar, and it'll still have all the same solutions as the original equation. So if that's the case, then uh, we could say, well, uh, what can we do or what can we multiply by to, to eliminate the decimal? In this case, uh, just keep in mind, every time you multiply a number by 10, it really just scoots the decimal to the right uh, a place value. We call it an order of magnitude. And so since all of these are out to the nearest hundredth, we could necessarily just take both of these equations as a kind of an intermediate step and multiply them by 100 uh, and, and that would shift our decimal twice to the right. And you know, another way to think about this is you could just consistently, you know, depending upon the equation, but take all of the decimal places of every coefficient and or constant and just shift them right and left uh, to change the magnitude of the equation but not the solution. So in this case, you know, you'd end up with some new equation. We say like 5x minus 3y equals 21 and then we'd have 7x's in our second constraint here plus 2y's equal to 16 and then from here we could just choose to do this with either substitution or elimination. In this case uh, it seems elimination would probably be the best method or linear combination. So let's go ahead and, and eliminate with our y's since they already have a positive and negative coefficient. And we're going to go and take the top 1 times 2 here and the bottom 1 times 3 which generates this new system here. We have 10x's on top now minus 6y's and uh, 221s is 42 constants. We say, okay, so 3 7s, that's 21 x's. Uh, this is uh, plus 6y, plus 6y. And in terms of a constant, we say 3 16s is 48. So now, da -da -da, we can sum all these. Um, we're going to start with our x's here. We say 31 x's. Our x's now, or our y's, excuse me, eliminate each other. So it's 31 x's equal to, it looks like we have uh, 40 and 40 is 80 plus another you know, 10 here, 90. So we'd say, okay, so back solving here, we'd say divide both sides by 31. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and we have this, we have x equal to 90 thirty-firsts. And so now back solving here, we could just plug this uh, back into one of the original equations. Now, <coughs> excuse me, we could plug it back in one of the original equations or one of the altered equations that we had come up with here. And it seems that, um, probably be much more convenient to put it back into one of the altered equations. So putting this back into um, one of the altered equations, I think that we're, since we're solving for y, let's go ahead and put it back into this second equation here. y is positive and has a small coefficient. So we say uh, 7 of these x's that we know now plus 2 y's is equal to 16 constants. Of course we're plugging back in 90 31st, so 90, 90 31sts. So we say 7 times 90, this would be 630 of these 31st plus 2y's equal to 16. Now I'm going to put the 16 over 1. Since we're dealing with fractions here, we're going to go ahead and we say we could convert this to 31st uh, by taking the top and the bottom of this times 31. So we say 16 31st. Let's go ahead and do this here. We say 16. There we go, 16 times 31. We end up with 496. So on the right side here, we have uh, 496, 496 thirty-firsts. We're about to subtract off 630 from the left side here, and that's equal to 2y. Of course, we just subtracted this value here over to the right. So we say 2y equal to, let's see, the difference between 496 and 630. So minus 630. 134. So 134 31sts. So 134 31st. Of course, this is negative, just to be clear on this, I'll put it in a different color. If we split this in half, we could just like double the denominator um, essentially, or we could say y equals you know negative 134 31st divided by 2, same as multiplied by a half. I only do this because this 2 and this 134 should. Uh, Cross-reduce, so it looks like we have, um, what, 77? No, 67, 67. So uh, it comes out to be negative 67 
31st. So probably a poorly generated example, but essentially this is how you would deal with something that, uh, you know, you start off with decimals. Let's make them just integer values. Now, what if I'm dealing with fractions? So you notice system number two here. Say x fourth plus y six equal to one, uh, and x minus y equals three. I do want to go ahead and write this off to the side here. This would be the same thing as one fourth x plus one sixth y equal to one. I just want to be clear on that because uh, this is two different representations of the same thing, but our goal here is going to be to eliminate the denominators first. So the best way to do this is choose the least common denominator between um, your, your two fractions here. We say four and six. Most likely the best thing to go with here is like 24, the least common denominator. Uh, so we're going to multiply this entire thing through by 24. And what you're going to see is it generates this new equation in which we have integer values again. But we say 24 and this 4 here, they cross reduce. So 24 and 4, the 24 will become 6. We say 6 times x give us 6x in the first equation. Now 24 times y6, the 24 and the 6 cross reduce also this time. But we say the 24 will become 4. So 4 times y be 4y. And then 24 times our 1 in the top equation, we have 24. This is the same thing now is uh, the equation we had previously. So now, working through this, we can do substitution. We can do elimination. I think I'm pro, you know, partial to elimination. And we're going to go ahead and multiply the second equation here by uh, less than 4. So distributing the 4 through now, we have this new system, 6x plus 4y equal to 24 constants. And we have on the bottom here, 4x minus 4y's. This is equal to 12 constants. So now summing all of these, our y's cancel. We have 10 total x's. And uh, the constants on the right here are summed to 36. So now dividing both sides by 10, of course, the inverse of multiply by 10. We say that we have 36 tenths. Of course, it would be the same thing as 18 fifths. 18 fifths. So now if this is x, we're going to plug this back into one of the original equations. Or, you know, we could put it in one of the modified. But I say, since we're solving for y, let's plug this into our second equation. So we have uh, second equation, x minus y equal to 3, 18 fifths. If we were to subtract 18 fifths from both sides, now we have negative y equals, now I'm going to change this 3 over 1 here on the right to fifths, it would be 15, 15 fifths, same as 3 over 1, minus the 18 fifths from the left side, and that leaves us with negative 3 fifths, and so positive y equals positive 3 fifths. So of course the system has one solution, we'd say it's a consistent independent system, but our solution here, at least the point where these two uh, graphs would intersect, would be 18 and fifths and 3 fifths. So now this last system over here, again, I just kind of want to play with this because, you know, it looks complex, but it's really not. Uh, again, we have fractions on the top constraint here, so we're going to eliminate the same, you know, same way we did on the last example here. We're going to multiply through by the least common denominator, in this case it happens to be 12. So now, you know, without thinking too much about the top, we'll, we'll deal with the top in a minute, but we say <clears throat> this 12 and this 4, they cross-reduce, of course. 4 goes into 12 three times. What you end up with is this. You say 3 times what's on top, which is 3 of these x plus 3 things. Now plus our 12 and our 3 on the second fraction here, they cross-reduce, and our 12 becomes a 4. So we say 4 of these y minus 1 things. And this is the same thing as 12 times 1, which is 12. So we've got a little bit of cleanup to do in this system here. Uh, this is not too horrible. As a matter of fact, we'll just go ahead and distribute our, our constants up top here. So we end up with this. 3x plus 9 uh, plus 4y minus 4 is 12. And before we rewrite the second constraint, I'm actually going to go ahead and clean this up. So what I mean is basically I'm going to gather my constants here. It becomes 3x's plus 4y's. Now our 9 positive and 4 negative constants come out to be positive 5. And uh, if, we're going to subtract this 5 from both sides here so that we can get it into what we call standard form. That would be, would be of course, variables on the left and all our constants on the right. So we say 7. So now, this is the same thing as our first constraint from up top. And we'll rewrite our second constraint underneath. So 2x minus y equals 12. So go, going about solving this now, you know, it's just regular 2 by 2 system. We'll go ahead and maybe eliminate our y's here. So we get 3x's plus 4y's equals 7 is our first constraint. 8x's minus 4y's equal to 48 constants on our second constraints. And you can see here that we get 11x's remaining. And over here on the right, seems that we get uh, 48 plus 7 gives us a nice 55, which would imply that x equals 5. 
And from here, we don't have to put this back into, let's say, the top equation. We put this back into the second equation up here. We'll put our camera up here. We say 2x minus, oops, we know x. 2 times 5 minus y equals 12. Put in our 5 here. So 10 minus y is 12. Therefore, negative y, if we subtract 10 from both sides of this, uh, negative y is uh, 2. Therefore, positive y is negative 2. And so again, we have a consistent independent system in which our x value is 5 and our y value is 2. And if we were to graph this, of course, that's where our two solution sets or two graphs would intersect. So cheers.